these are the settings you can use to get the maximum brightness on SDR without having to access the service menu. So you can use OLED Motion Pro High. So on the consoles right now on Fortnite, uh, you don't have HDR and there's no HDR tricks uh, like what we can do here on the PC. So to use OLED Motion Pro, you want the maximum brightness possible so it doesn't look dark. And I'm going to show you the settings and I'm going to explain you a little bit why. So basically we come here to advanced uh, settings. Of course, we are on game optimizer mode. Brightness. We max out OLED pixel brightness and we have to adjust the contrast to 97. We cannot go beyond that and I'm going to explain you why. And screen brightness 50, gamma 2.2. And I am using the clarity here with OLED Motion Pro High. And also, just to show you the colors, uh, color depth 55, auto detect, warm 50. Okay, so why this contrast in 97? You cannot increase it beyond 97, at least on my TV, otherwise, you clip. Uh, colors so basically the way I know that is by using a color clipping pattern let me show you the keyboard here you see it looks very bright no issues whatsoever so I use this color clipping pattern I'm gonna have that in the description of the video and I see that if I increase the the contrast beyond 97 I start clipping uh, the red Mainly the red is the color that starts clipping. So that's okay, from 97 to 100, you're not getting more brightness that you can notice anyway. So that's a way to go here. And it looks bright. Actually, I measured here on the snow, on this snowy area, the full screen brightness with white was 120 nits, a little bit more, 125. So that's, that's very good. That's very good because here, as you can see, we can get the full screen with white, which is insane. It looks very, very bright. And yeah, 120 nits for SDR is very, very good. Because, you know, OLED Motion Pro High reduces the full screen brightness. So when I do this here on this white, which is <laughs> uncomfortable, so I measure 120. So that's very, very good. So everything is visible. The colors pop, everything looks beautiful. And on the consoles, you can play Fortnite at 60 or 120. I am not sure if the 120 FPS mode, uh, it is 120 most of the time, or if it's a rock solid 120, or if, or if, it's, or if it's dropping all the time, or maybe it's 100. So try it if you if you don't see any jumpiness so if you pan the camera and you don't see uh jutter you don't see the jumpiness like the picture jumping then it's, it's good so just use the 120 fps mode uh for sure with all the motion pro high on this lgc1 that looks amazing so there is another way you can get more brightness but you need to access the service menu and it is not something that I can recommend, okay? Because it really pushes the brightness. <laughs> so it is going to be the brightest full screen white you can get on this LG OLEDs. And I cannot recommend that. I don't use it myself. Of course, I'm on the PC. I use this SDR HDR trick to get the brightness uh, necessary. But I would use it to be honest if I was on a console if I need the brightness and I don't have any tricks I would use that to be honest I'm not afraid of that but I cannot recommend it it's basically on the service menu and I showed that before on a video with a proper disclaimer do this at your own risk uh, using the color control app you access the service menu so you, you don't even need a service remote just an application on the on the computer you open the service menu and you change 
uh, one setting that is called module HDR module HDR on and that's it just turn that on and it gives you a little bit more brightness so when you change the settings that setting from what we have right now you see a very small difference so you might think man that's not risky it's just a little bit more but that setting pushes up to 400 nits full screen 400 nits on an OLED okay there is no OLED on the market it doesn't matter if it comes with a heat sink it doesn't matter there's no OLED and probably there will never be an OLED uh, consumer OLED I mean we have reference monitors maybe they will have that but a consumer OLED that comes out of the box 400 nits full screen that's not gonna happen <laughs> so that's more than what these manufacturers will allow you so I cannot recommend that but you can use it I show how to do that before and it is an option is there I would use it if I don't have any other options so there you go that's the setting I would recommend if you use HLG and it looks uh, the colors they look wild <laughs> sometimes especially the reds are overly saturated so if you don't want that and you want your colors to be a little bit more accurate then use these settings this is not accurate by any means uh, there's no accuracy when you use OLED uh, Motion Pro there's no accuracy at all uh, that gamma would need to be uh, corrected and I don't have instruments and I don't know <laughs> I am not a TV calibrator but we need more brightness for sure when we use OLED Motion Pro because the brightness is reduced uh, big time so this is a way this is an option and there's no black crush I also tested with a near black test pattern that I have open over here so with this near black test pattern I tested and the entire range is visible so we have full on the GPU and full on the TV and the entire near black test pattern is visible of course we are in a bright room you're not gonna see that here but it is perfectly visible the entire uh, near black test pattern I mean even with BT1886 it's still perfectly visible so you might think that OLED Motion Pro crushes the blacks but it doesn't and I thought that at the beginning I thought it should be crushing the blacks because if everything gets dark but it doesn't it doesn't crush the blacks and the way I, and the reason I know that is because I test with a with a near black test pattern and it does not crush the crush the blacks it makes the blacks darker <laughs> but it doesn't crush so what is visible is still gonna be visible not not a problem at all so that's good that's good so there's no need to raise the black level at all that's it let me know if you have any questions and oh let me show you the, let me share with you the settings I am using on the game itself let me uh, back up a little bit because this I absolutely hate and I, I, I never use that word I because you know I'm trying to share <laughs> good and nice information but if there's one thing that I hate <laughs> is this blue blue menus why <laughs> why the color blue is nasty for your eyes so there's nothing that I hate more than opening this settings menu here on on Fortnite this is just eye searing especially with this kind of brightness that we are pushing here it's just insane so I'm using 4k uh, TSR epic balance 58% of 4k and then uh, high shadows ambient occlusion uh, screen space epic view distance and and textures and I have high resolution uh, you know textures and the effects and pros post processing is in high okay so no lumen no nanite none of that crap <laughs> because I want 120 uh, black from assertion I want to get 120 FPS solid without drops and the lumen and nanite looks good but the performance is just horrendous so I want to do a separate video telling you 
what I would like from Unreal Engine 5.1. And I know it's possible. That's not. That's just not what they are pursuing. That's not what they want. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like they are partnered with Nvidia to sell GPUs. <laughs> that's what it is. So, but I, I'm gonna do a separate video with my recommendations with what I would like from the Unreal Engine 5.1 and how can that engine be just awesome, fantastic, and give you a good picture quality with amazing performance, which is what we are looking for. Even 120 sample and hole is not good enough. That's why I have to use black from insertion. I want 480 hertz, 480 frames per second at least. <laughs> and then having a, a BFI option to use 50% uh, of that and get one millisecond of persistence or even better. Uh, or having a 1000 or 2000 hertz display and then Nvidia goes crazy with the interpolation with that frame generation. But I'm gonna do a separate video about that, the future of gaming. And based on the Blurbusters law and everything that I know and what I want, the direction that I would like the industry to go. So yeah, I will do a separate video about that. Let me know if you have any questions and, and yeah.